So hey guys, welcome back to uh, another lecture. So yesterday we discussed some of the topics which are important in the vectors, dot product and the cross product. So today we're going to look at the linear combinations. So what do you mean by a linear combinations of the vectors? So it is a combination of two or more vectors and multiplied with the each by a scalar and then we simply add it up and then we will call it as a then we will call as a linear combination. It's just a combination of it's just it's just a combination of two or more vectors which are multiplied with the which are multiplied with the scalar and then we and the, the resulting the resulting vector which is called as a linear combination of two vectors. So here in the example which I was given like three u the u and v are the vectors and the three and the two are the scalars. So we simply add these two up and then we get something something output and that the resulting vector the resulting vector is called as a linear combination of vectors u and v linear combination of the vectors of u and v so for example for example if a vector u is 2 2 and 1 and the vector v and the vector v is 1 and 2 so v and the scalar v take a, a random scalar like 3 and 2 and then we simply and we simply the and then we simply add these two and the resulting like by adding these two like like we simply multiply these two vectors we simply we simply multiply these two vectors and then we and then we add these two up and the, the resulting vector the resulting vector is called as the linear combination of these two vectors the linear combination of u and v vectors so i hope you understand like just a combination of two are vectors and multiplied with the scalar so I recommend to explore it by own so that you will understand in a better way. So after that, after completing the linear combinations, so we are going to discuss something known as span of vectors. So what do you mean by a span of vectors? So it's just a set of all possible linear combination of group of vectors. So just a set of all possible linear combination of group of vectors e is called as a is called as a span of vectors. So if the span of vectors of v1, v2, and v3 are written are written as we simply written in a parenthesis like v1 v2 and v3 so for example for example uh, the span of vector the span of vector minus 5 and 2 the span of vector minus 5 and 2 and then then the span then the span of vector become like like this so it's just a set of just a set of linear combination of these two vectors just a linear combination so what do you mean by linear combination i just said it before I just said before please please review it so it's just a combination of two vectors is called as a span of vector by adding these two vectors we get we get span of vector and we can divide from span to linear combination by just doing this so try it try it more examples on your own like like one two like having one two like one two etc so try it on your own i i hope you do that so after completing the span of after completing the span of vectors, so we go into something known as the linear dependence and the linear independence. So how what is linear dependence? So how they are dependent and how they are independent. So if the vector if the vector have a linear t dependent, then the vector is represented as a linear combination. So for example, if the vectors are not represented as a linear combination. So if no vector, so for example, like if no vector has, is represented as a linear combination, if no vector is represented as a linear combination of the vectors, then we call as a the linearity independent of the vector. So that what do you mean by linear independent? So Indian independent means like they they don't have any dependence upon the each vector. So so for example, v vector and we have a two vectors. So if if the if the they are both are independent to each other then we call as a linearity independent of the vectors so the linearity to get a hands-on experience i suggest you to research on your own so so use chat gpt for that it will give you the more accurate answers so i hope you understand like i hope you understand like what is dependence and how it independent of the two vectors in a linear combination and then the dependence of the two vectors in a linear combination of the vectors so if the, if the, if it is dependent then we call as a the if the uh, if the, and then we call as the vectors are linearly dependent if it if they are independent and then we call we simply call as they are linearly independent that's it so after completing those dependence and independence we're going to cover something known as norms 
so the norms just tell it just tells about the length of the vectors so there are three kind of norms there are three kind of norms l1 norm l2 norm and the max norm so what are these we going to discuss in detail it further so what is the use of norms in the machine learning the they, this is used to reduce the overfitting of the models so what do you mean by overfitting then we going to discuss so we going to have in, in our in our further lectures what is overfitting what is underfitting and everything so just as of now as of now just norms will reduce the overfitting of the model just just have a basic idea of that okay so so the norms communicate with this scaling so the norms communicates with this scaling and it is zero only with the origin so it is the norms are zero only in the origin as i discussed what is origin you see in my previous lectures like what is origin and how the vectors can be drawn etc so we going to discuss what is l1 norm what is l1 norm so it is called as also the manhattan distance so what do you mean by a manhattan distance it just it, it calculates the sum of absolute value it just calculates the sum of absolute value so the formula is like so the formula like the l1 norm so it it is a so it is the l1 norm so it's just a summation of from 1 to n r equal to 1 to n and then we simply it's just a sum of the sum of absolute value just a sum of absolute value so for example i got i want to give you an example like like i want to have a l1 norm of the vector like a vector like 2 minus 2 and 2 so by using this formula by you by using this formula i want to have this so i just apply this formula over here and i get like we have a norm over there so we're going to get 6 as a output so it uses the norms it uses the norms it calculates the sum of absolute value so i want to discuss some of the advantages so i want to discuss some of the advantages of l1 norm the l1 norm the l1 norm it optimizes the it optimizes the median and and the L1 norm is not sense to for L1 norm is not sense to for outliers. So we have to remember these two things like it optimizes the median and it is is not sense to for the outliers. Okay. So after that we are going to cover something known as L2 norm. It is also called as Euclidean norm. So it just calculates the distance from the origin. It calculates the distance from the origin, whatever it may be, just distance from the origin. Okay. And it is represented as like this two norms. And the formula is square root of the summation i is equal to 1 to n. We simply square the value. So it's just a square of sum of all elements. So I'm going to give you a better example like here. So for example, for example, uh, as we take the previous example, if we apply this formula and then we're going to get like Then we are going to get like 2 square plus 4 and 4 and 4 and then we are going to get 12. So what is the value of root 12? Comment down below. So the L2 norm regularization optimizes the mean cost which is often used as a performance moment. It optimizes the mean cost. Okay. And this is especially good fit if you if you don't have any outliers. So it is very good when you when you don't have any, any outliers in your data and it improves the prediction performance so i hope you understand like uh, so what do you mean by l2 norm and how how we use this to make predictions and how this especially good for the data if we don't have any outliers like something so after that we're going to cover something known as max norm so just simple like max norm by the word you can understand max it takes the distance by taking the maximum element from the vector it just takes the maximum element from the vector so so the, we can return a formula like this we just look this uh, we have a we simply take the max value we simply take the max value for example so for example a vector is given like like 2 5 11 and we apply if we have a max norm over there and then the max of the max of v is equal to what is the maximum value it is 11 it is 11 so the max of this is equal to 11 so i i have covered 
So I have covered first the linear combination. It's just a com it's just a combination of two vectors and multiplied with the scalar and uh, we have a usage over there and then we come to the span of vectors and then we come to the span of vectors where the where the set of all possible linear combination of the vectors is just a combination of the it's just a linear combination of the it's just a linear combination of the two vectors and then we come to the linear dependence and the independence how they are dependent and why why they are dependent etc and then we covered and we cover something known as norms and we discussed about L1 norm, L2 norm and the max norm and how they are useful in our machine learning and how they are used in optimization problems and how they are performed in the outliers and not etc. So I hope you enjoy this session and the next lecture is going to be the matrices. So we are going to cover so we are going to cover the matrices and the scalar matrix products and the matrix addition we are going to cover we have we, we have our operations on matrices and the transpose of the matrix and we have a special kind of matrices we're going to discuss in our next lectures after that we're going to cover the triangle matrix and the symmetric matrix determinant and the properties of determinant and a lot more so stay tuned to the ml hub so until then bye bye see you in a next lecture